Hi there folks, my name is Nova 24 and welcome back to The Three Grumpy Simmers. So a bit of a, probably the intro that maybe you weren't expecting. Uh, so folks, this is actually part two of our latest episode. So if you've missed part one, check in the links in the description down below to head, to head over and listen to that either on YouTube or on Podbean. Uh, but this is, so in, in part one, we of course covered off the the disgusting events that around the, uh, that surrounded the theft of uh, DC Design's uh, F15 or the core contents of that and used by another developer to make their own payware product. We dealt around that, we dealt around discussions about that and how it affects the greater flight simulation community. In this episode, we're going to be taking a little bit of a different tack and we're going to be talking about the release from Captain Sim of their first product for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, just a quick point of note with this episode as well folks is that this episode was recorded before the next round of corporate suicide took place uh, where Captain Sim made the unprecedented move to actually restrict uh, of freeware content creators so you the community from being able to uh, release and share liveries created for their aircraft uh, so please bear that in mind that this was created before that event took place before that was known and all we knew was that the product had been, has been released sit back and enjoy the three grumpy simmers of Pirates Developers and the Flight Simulation Community, Part 2. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. actually, and also uh, uh, it <coughs> serves as, as so it's talking of curation, is a wonderful segue uh, into the other thing that we wanted to deconstruct on this episode. Um, and it, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep this one fairly short and light. Well, you know, let's face it, it's only two engines. Um, so it can't be that heavy. <laughs> so... So this whoa, is whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's still considered a heavy though. That's the thing. Apparently, according to the fuel system, there's still four engines. So <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell them what we're uh, what we're chuckling so, about? So here? <laughs> okay. So all right. As everybody knows, we are not tube liner pilots. We kind of don't care. Drew's probably the one who's got the most time in airliners, having done VAs previously. I've dabbled a bit, usually oh, only in yes. the... And, and, and he still has that thousand yard stare when he thinks about Charlie coming down through lodging his, uh, lodging his uh, pie reps. Anyway, so um, my involvement in is fairly minimal, dabbled in the basic ones and that's kind of about it. Sergio, I think yours is probably even less than mine. So this week, uh, we saw all the yeah, the week leading up to this episode being recorded. Um, we saw um, I want to say critically acclaimed developer, but I feel like I'm talking about a developer that's no longer with us. So uh, Captain Sim uh, <laughs> released their latest product, uh, and if I correct, I believe their first product for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, correct. Yes. And they released the, and I have it, I, ha, I, I am looking at it on my other screen. They released their Boeing 777-200 base pack. Now, we've had conversations about developers in the past and porting assets over from legacy into new sim. There's a wrong way and there's a right way to do it, whether you do it or not and stuff like that. Um... So I don't even know. I don't. I just. I can't. I, <laughs> the man just give up. <laughs> I do. Okay. No. I'm just gonna call it for what it is. Captain Sim. Oh, how the mighty have fallen! <laughs> like there, there is no oh, other. There is man. no other way to put this. There is absolutely no when, other way to put this. Here's the thing. When I saw what was being presented okay the price point i'm not going to complain too much about the price point like i said before 30, you know i expect 30? airliners to typically be higher but they're they're asking like 30 bucks for this base pack or whatever and i have a long time history with captain sim you know when i was in charge i was the ceo of u.s airways virtual which is now called american virtual american va 
one of my favorite aircraft to fly was the Boeing 757. And I exclusively used the Captain Sim version. And even after I got out of the whole VA thing, you know, a couple of years afterwards and, you know, got more into military planes, again, one of the birds that I loved to fly was the Captain Sim C-130. So over the years, they've always had that very good reputation. They've always given me that feeling that, hey, you know, they make stuff that I know I will enjoy. So naturally, it came as a huge shock to me when I see this, you know, 777 coming into Microsoft Flight Simulator. And granted, the exterior looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, top notch. Go inside the cabin. It looks pristine. The way that they did the, the seats and, you know, little TV monitors that are on the back of the seats and everything, little magazines here and there, the bathrooms, everything. Gorgeous. And then you get into the cockpit. <laughs> Let me tell you something about that cockpit. <laughs> Captain Sim, I understand that it takes a while. Program things correctly. And especially in a new sim like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which already has been collecting quite a great deal of flack regarding, you know, airliner systems, modeling, and so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. I get that. Taking the shortcut of using the Asobo assets for the 747, a four-engined aircraft, to represent the avionics and assets for the 777. How many engines does that have now? Yeah. That is not the right move. And that is not the right and move. It's and literally, they just cranked out two of the engines. Like, they like put it, like, drew like a black, a black XML box over it. Mm -hmm. And then on the fuel page, it still shows four it engines still turning shows and burning. Four engines. It's like I said earlier, it, did you even try at that point? This is a developer that over the years I've had a lot of respect for. And that's saying a lot considering the fact that I really don't like a lot of the tube liners out there. That is a company that I had always gone to. To see something like this right now, it's a little disappointing to say the least. The, Captain the, Sim, I know you can do better. The, the, I don't care if it takes much longer. I don't care if you, you know, pull it, retcon it, give us some the, updates or something. Work with a Sobo to come up with a proper panel that only has two engines on there. That's like, not Airbus, by the way. We don't want Airbus in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's did, a like, whole did, different ballgame. The, the, the worst part is for me, though, is that this is actually the, the worst part is is I'm actually not surprised. I'm actually not. Because I, again, it's one of those things of, of of producing the weekly news video that I do and I, and I do all the research to go with it. Do I review review and you do an hour long review of every product I cover? No, I don't, but I do enough research in all of them. And I've got enough experience to locate and go, something's not right. And Captain Sim, you've been on a downward trajectory for a long time your prices has been have been going up because and again that was a we did a whole episode about prices and where that's going um mm -hmm. but your the, what you did with the what was the last one they put out was the seven actually wasn't it the last one the seven was it wasn't it the triple seven for prepared that they got roasted over because basically 90 percent of the functionality of it when they released the base pack didn't work was it triple seven? It might have been. It might have been. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I haven't really paid much attention, like really close attention, to their products in the last few years. Yeah. Partly but, because of what you say, and partly because I just don't do yeah airliner. So, so I'm, I'm looking at it, and I've been watching their quality just descend, and it's it's this for me. As I said, the worst part for me about this is that I'm not surprised. Is that I see this and I go, this is the culmination of the last several years where of, of, a, of a developer that's not wanting to, that's not putting the effort in anymore. I mean, the, the, the worst part is for me is not only 
did they pair the so in their description right says you know highly detailed and accurate model of the Boeing triple seven two hundred ER. Uh, 4K okay. ultra high rev de- definition textures. 4K standard. I'll give that. Like, okay, but. But. Okay. Yeah, it's nothing to write home about. <laughs> and then. But, 8K. But, but here's the thing. The publicity. This is the part I absolutely love. The publicity shot that is on the product homepage that shows, you know, the the cockpit in all its glory with half the screen blanked out where you can actually see. Do you see the two uh, N1 levels with the little green numbers at the top of it showing what they are? And then right next to it, you've got two blank columns, but the green numbers are still there. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, 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 no. One, no this is, yeah, but it gets better. <laughs> if you look at the FMS page that's right below that, it says aircraft 7478i. But does it have tire smoke? I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Table flip, they're done. So, I, 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 so this is this is what this in their defense, MSFS does not have tired smoke, Sergio. So it's not Captain Sim's fault this time. See now, I, see, I don't, the, see, I don't care. Just, I, I can forgive the two engines, not the tire smoke. I'm not the tire sorry. Smoke. Okay. So, so I just want to call out and say, go, Captain Sim. What the actual are you playing at? Like. Okay, I expect this, like this kind of conduct and this kind of bullshit behavior, we expect from, oh, no, I will name and shame this developer, this Braydock 3D guy, okay? I expect it from him, okay? I 100% it from them because he slapped together a shitty 3D model with crappy paint job on it and lifted all the Microsoft avionics out of it because he never made an add-on before in his life and made a shit ton of money out of it. I expect it from people like that, okay? okay? From a developer of your caliber and your heritage, are you trying to destroy what's left of your reputation. Your reputation was already on ice with a lot of the community after your last few releases and your product support and your pricing and the way you've been pricing yourself out of the market. To do this, and uh, as Drew's pointed out, okay, sure, it's only $30, but you literally poured it over your model from prepared. You change the channel on the PBR layer to make it work with MS, MSFS instead of prepared v5, and I'm pretty sure actually that means all you had to do was pull the uh, PBR texturing that you did for prepared v4. Um, so I'm pretty sure they use the same, and that was it. Like, yeah, okay, you had to redo, you, yes. had, to, you had to re-export your animations out of Blender or out of um, 3ds Max, but. You already had the assets. You did zero, zero development work in the cockpit. But remember I... what Sergio said. Systems are overrated. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I prove my point. <laughs> my work here is done. Um, I'm, 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 circle I'm of curious. life again. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm curious about something. Captain Sim is a company that has been out there for... <laughs> Quite some time. Did they have any nine or before? I had I had had their I had their F one hundred four Starfighter in FS nine. Is this the same team or are these the same guys? Were there any changes? I don't know because sometimes companies just you know completely change and all of a sudden I'm aware. I think it's the same people. I mean, mean, I'm not maybe some of the. I'm not yeah. aware of any major changes, but to be honest, I haven't kept up with their personnel schedule, so I don't know. Oh. I mean, I only really engage with them on a, like, not even directly. I engage with them through my work. So, yeah. And that was only it's, through third parties. So, it's really weird then. Would, were they panicking for some reason? Did they just, you know, want to snatch a piece of the market because they needed to they thought they needed to be on microsoft flight simulator i don't know it, it's really weird it, uh, i mean i mean uh, that's I, a, I, I, I look i'm exactly as you said theory. earlier right now microsoft flight simulator is the bell of the ball 
It is the cat cow, so to speak. Everybody's coming over to it. Not everybody's yeah, taking cool. the same approach like PMDG has done, because, you know, they still yeah. haven't brought any products over, but they're doing it in a deliberate way. And even though I will never buy a PMDG product, I applaud the way that they're yep. doing it because they're actually putting in a lot of background work to get this thing done. And, they're not slapping yeah. something together using default assets, I, and, modifying, and, and you, editing, and omitting, yeah. and, and then and, trying to sell it. And you know damn well that I am not <laughs> Randazio's biggest fan in any way, shape, or form. However, I will give him 100% respect on his approach to MSFS. Is that he, and he has been working directly with Asobo since long before the rest of the community even knew this sim even was even in existence, you know. Yep. So they've been working with them. They've been advising, you know, advising with them, working with them, and they know where the sim's at and they know where their development skills are at and what they want to do. So they are going to bring it. They are taking the really long route, but you know what? They're going to come out with it. What I'm betting is going to be a fantastic product at the end of the day. They're not, Panic. What seems to you? And you, I think, Sergio, I think you're right. I think there's just they've just panicked and gone. They need to do this now. I've seen this from several developers where they've panicked and thrown something out for MSFS, and it has burnt every single one of them. Every single one of the developers that has rushed something to market have all been burnt. Even Caranado, who were involved with aircraft creation for the core sim. They got to be first to market. We'll have a whole. We don't. Need, I'm not even going to open the conversation about the fact that they had insider knowledge of how the sim works. So we're not even going right. to talk about that. <laughs> um, but they've been called out for the fact that they still rushed their content to market despite having an insider advantage, and it's still using FSX old FSX code and assets. Um, Black Box Studios. They rushed out their um, uh, Bird Dog. For for the for the sim and they got burnt. Their Islander is apparently getting a lot better reviews, except for the texture still looks shit. But the content, like the actual simulation of it, is looking better. Um, Golden Age Simulations, one of my favorite like old time aircraft developers, absolutely love them. They got roasted for their release for MSFS because they just ported out something which has been kicking around since FS nine and thought they could that would be good enough, and they got destroyed because of it. Because it doesn't have PBR, it doesn't have the texture mapping is shit and all the rest of it. So it's like, I think you might be right. So there's this, there's this uh, FOMO that's going on with some developers at the moment, where it's like, oh, panic! We don't have anything from the sim. Quick, throw something at it and see what happens. Don't do that, please don't. Fail every time. Yep. Yeah. And see, that's part of the reason why I also go back to developers such as DC Designs. No, here's a guy that, you know, for all intents and purposes, relatively new. Not a juggernaut like a PMDG or a yep. Captain Sim or Aerosoft or anything like that. But there is also a developer that is going about it how I feel is the right way, you know. They understand that not everything's going to work all at once, and they're making constant iterations to it, and mm -hmm. they're at least trying yep. to give some kind of fidelity to the product because, honestly, they know their entire reputation's on the line. It's it's not even so much about the, the paycheck. It's not even so much about making sure that you can feed your kids at night. Your reputation is, is what's going to determine whether you're ever going to get a job in the industry yeah. again. Yeah. And and the the worst part and the thing that I, that I'm really that I'm really concerned and the biggest thing that frustrates me is that and and again Sergio it's going to allude back to your point that we have so many new so much new blood coming into this this sim now that people are going to buy this trash and then think that's the standard. That's one yep. of my biggest fears. Yep. 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 And, it, and people are going to go, if that's the standard, I'm just never going to buy anything again. Or even worse than that. They'll just people leave. Will believe, you know, or even worse, uh, they yep. won't leave and they yep. will become the standard. That is my concern, you know, that all, all of a sudden developers understand, yeah. okay, I, why should I go 
and you know the extra mile to do something when and, and i i have had that i'm i'm not going to tell who it is uh, i'm mm-hmm. sure you guys will understand who it is uh, especially drew perhaps but i've had this conversation with a developer actually uh, and when i said that you know i was one of my concerns was the fact that people thought that what he was doing would be the standard for those mm. types of aircraft. What he told me was, yeah, but look, over 90% of the people that use it are just happy and they don't want more. So why should I bother? And this is why, Wrong answer. and this is why, Wrong as, answer. and this is, and this is why as much as I have just spent the last, whatever, 10, 15 minutes paying out on Captain Sim at the same time, I also can't fault them because yeah. who is their competition right now? Who is the, who is Captain Sims airliner competition right now? The only airliner competition they have right now is default aircraft um, or Braydock and his 787 Max, which uses the A320 and 747 <laughs> avionics. So, so, so this yeah. is so, so you know, as as much as Captain Sim, I'm I'm very disappointed in you. Um, at the same time, I also can't fault you because you looked at the market around you and went, "That this guy's works. that guy's making a shed load of money from a fifty yeah. from a fifty dollar model of Turbo Squid and using default avionics." With- yeah, and th- that is on us. That is on the community. But right, and although you, you it's you said always it right. supply and demand. Yeah, always supply and, and demand, yeah. and it's really you, up to the community. And you were you were right, Drew, when you said that it's the wrong answer. But the thing is, although it's the wrong answer because you should be aiming at doing better products, he's still right. Why should you spend more time working on something when 90% of the people that are getting it are more than happy about it, praising to the top, saying it's the best thing, when it's not? When it's, when it's really good, it's a good work, it's a good job, it's a good add-on. Yeah, it's nice. Um, but it's, it's not the thing that we should be aiming for. We should always well, aim to do better. I mean, exactly. that's, just, that's, a, that's Which, a life philosophy, I think, is that we should yeah. always aim to do better. At the moment we Let's, stop. And even if you don't do. have any competition directly with other parties, yep. be in competition with yourself. Outdo everything you've ever done in the past. Exactly. You know, I, I've, and to try and round it out on a positive note, I actually want to take a moment to praise that Bell 47 because I think their approach has been really good because now I know, okay, it's, oh, but, but Nova, it doesn't have any systems like a 747 does. You're right. It doesn't. But have you tried flying a helicopter? Those things literally <laughs> try to kill you all the time. Every minute. <laughs> so, Every family. So, so what I really, and I really want to say, you know, so if you, if a developer wants a, an example of development done well, look at Fly Inside for their Bell 47 because they have modeled, and again, and in many ways, look at a Sobo and what they've done with the core sim, is that they've produced, so Bell 47, hello, um, the Bell, so the Fly Inside team produced the Bell 47 and it is like incredibly well modeled and it will kill you virtually. It will virtually kill you um, if you don't treat her right. But within that, they've then said, okay, if you want us to take a little bit of the workload off you so that you can just fly around and have more fun and not have to try and figure out how to maneuver seven axes and still think at the same time (laughs) while praying that the Jesus nut doesn't let go. um, (laughs) They actually offer the the in in their flight model to be able to take things, control certain things, and make things easy for you. Does it make it any less of a realistic simulation? No, it doesn't. You still have to fly right, even on the easy mode. If you don't fly right, she will still virtually kill you, as I found out live on stream. Um, however, um, the way they've done it was saying, okay, look, we'll make you can set your experience level. 
Now, if you just want to have something that's a that's a that's a fifty percent solution that allows you to hover and enjoy the sights without using the drone camera, that's fine. We'll give you that. If you want to be challenged to have to keep that aircraft upright and unstably stable, then you know what? Here you go. You have that as well. So have an add-on. So for all those who say, you know, and 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 again, DC Design is a great example of an 80% solution, but they still code everything so it looks like the real thing. You still have to yeah. flick the right switches to engage the autopilot. So have a look at who your audience is. Uh, do 80% or 75% <coughs> or most people who fly your add-on only want there for the experience of it? You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb and say they probably are. I am. Um, I fly the I fly the F fifteen um, or the Hawk Goshawk when I want to the, throw something around and have fun with it. Am I flying yep. like supposed to be flown? <laughs> Hell no. If I want to do that, I'll go to DCS. <laughs> um, but then if I but then when I jump into a GA, again, some days when I'll just want to just start on the runway and go. Other days, no, I'm going to actually practice my. Patterns. I will practice my visual flight rules. I will practice my navigation. So, but I can choose that level of experience. So I think that developers, I get, you can look in the marketplace and say, sure, I only have to do to this level because the market only seems to, is willing to pay a lot of money for that level. But you know what? Maybe you should start delivering up here. And we'll start growing our base even more because you'll have, because you'll be able to cater for the people that want to be here. You'll cater for the people that want to be here and you'll cater for the people that want to be here. And maybe one day you'll both rise up here. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's something that people also forget. I think developers are, are, are overseeing this. When you cater for the lower end of the spectrum, you are catering for the guys that um, are probably not even actually going to buy anything from you. Because a lot of a lot of the times we're talking about bad quality freeware, um, but the ones that do buy from you, they will probably not repeat. That they will not buy. repeat their business. They will you you will not get re- you'll get one time yeah. business or from anyone them. else yep. or anyone else because they just yep. want that thing to have some fun. Um, but you know, it's just again. But it, was just it for was fun. it worth fifty bucks worth of Was it fifty bucks worth of fun, or could I have? Right gone for something i go even further than that they just bought it because they want to fly that particular aircraft and that's all they're going to fly throughout their seeming life you know what i mean it's not like you and me and and drew which you know we enjoy new aircraft and we like mm-hmm. to get new stuff and we get like a lot of the community on or like a lot of the seeming community has been so far mm-hmm. the ecosystem is so rich because people buy several products mm-hmm. a lot of the people that prefer the lower yeah. end products mm. are probably the ones that don't actually spend that much money on mm. on the hobby mm. and eventually that is going to burst the bubble yeah. and that that is going to make um to make it harder for developers that are really putting the hard work in making good, good add-ons yeah. out there it's going to make the life miserable for them and, it, and it's it's I, not only not only does it make the life miserable as and as i've said before it means that people are going to not repeat by from not just that developer, but from any developer ever again. And exactly. you end up yeah. you end up doing a disservice. And I, I remember when um I said when when certain add-ons were released that a lot of the development community was up in arms because it gave everybody a bad name. And the incidences that we've talked about today are more incidences of that where it is giving people like the greater community a bad name. So as I said, folks, it's, this has been a interesting topic to talk about. It's one that it's been skirting around our, our topic list for a while, but this week really saw an imperative for us to start covering it. So uh, yes, it's been a very grumpy episode. Um, yeah. But let's finish. Let's finish with a high. Let's um. Let, let, let me do. No, no really. No, no, 40, no, no, Forty-seven. Amazing thought we did. Yeah, we with did. fly inside. No, no, okay. but it's not just. It's not just. Wait, fly he's inside. got a. He's there got a. Are... He's got a product announcement of an airliner. Hold up. <laughs> Boy, we have other. Pearls. Not again. Have... I'm not buying it again. <laughs> 
<laughs> we we have other pearls. We have other diamonds. We have other developers coming out there, and yep. we, I think they deserve a shout out. You know, the guys from uh, Big Radials, for example. Yep. New company point. coming out there. Good point. These guys are fantastic. They are learning. They are you know putting the extra effort mm-hmm. to make a good add-ons. <laughs> yep. The guys from Fine Side, which we already said. It's not all bad. We have new developers coming, yep. you know, with the bad, with this, with the stream yep. of bad, bad companies coming in, just trying to rip us off. We, we have, have streams amazing of gurus, new ones. companies yes, coming into the market, so it's not all bad. We're yep. not just we're not here saying, oh, steaming is ruined because it's all, it's not all bad. We have excellent, and, and I need to give a shout out because I know one of the guys personally, as you guys know, Bradley. Yep. Uh, which has been has helping me on you know, uh, as, as well. It's one of our moderators, great guy, um, kind of a neighbor of yours, Tristan. There, yeah, 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 Australia. yeah, yeah. So, um, shout out to them, yeah, they no, are abs- absolutely, doomed. absolutely. And 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 Sergio makes a really good point that, yeah, it isn't all doom and gloom, folks. Like, there are yeah. great stories here. And as I said, I, I will give PMG praise for them taking their time. Um, you know, Wing 42 mm-hmm. is another developer that is still very new and you know they only have they only have two products out one for legacy sims and one for msfs but they are both stunning stunning and i know what they've got coming as well uh which is gonna be amazing and even um, some of the developers that have been around for a while names that we all know and love that have actually taken Lion, the time Lionheart and brought Creations. stuff in lionheart creations lionheart huge, is a good huge one shout out to lionheart so lionheart creations <coughs> folks um are mm-hmm. the, their tb21 trinidad so it just received a massive update now um this is another developer who's been around a long time they got burnt when they brought this product to market. They, they when they brought it to MSFS, they got burnt because they got called out for using decade old techniques. But this developer has gone, they've listened to us and gone, you know what? You're right. There is a better way to do it. So now we have full PBR throughout all their textures. All the textures have all been updated. All their internals have been redone. Their model has been updated and cleaned up further. And now we have full 3D animated gauges instead of XMLs. Like nice. this developer has gone all out to go, you know what? You're right. This community was right. There are better ways to do it. So you're absolutely so. So Sergio, you're absolutely right. There, it was a great. Yeah, we need to finish on a high note. So mm-hmm. yeah, thanks for this opportunity. To, to I'm waiting shout for them to, to bring else. in their epic victory too, because I love the hell out of that thing in FSX. I want I the epic victory back. <laughs> and of course, I got to give a special shout out to Milvis because even though we've not always seen eye, eye to eye, eye. Mm-hmm. I love what you've done on the Corsair, and it yes. is still, right now, the number one most flown bird that I've got in MSFS. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, 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 good. So, there you go, folks. So, yeah, it isn't all doom and gloom, um, but, yeah, as I said, I hope, uh, hope you've all found this conversation to be uh, engaging, enlightening. Uh, as I said, it's it's an important conversation that needs to be had that sometimes it's not a comfortable conversation to have. Um, but as I said, I was absolutely livid this week and I was like, after the two things together, I was like, no, we, we, we need to have a conversation about this. So glad we did. All right, folks, that rounds up the three grumpy simmers, possibly the grumpiest three grumpy simmers I think we've ever had for a while. So I want to say a huge thank you to my fellow grumpy simmers. Uh, so Sergio from HellySimmer.com, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. See you next time. And thank you so much, Drew, for gracing us with your presence uh, and taking time out of your Tomcat cockpit to uh, to slum with us here uh, on the show. <laughs> My pleasure, as always. <laughs> Don't forget, folks, uh, to go and say check out uh, helisimmer.com for all your uh, aviation simulation and uh, helicopter news. Uh, also, make sure you have a check out his video uh, YouTube channel here as well. Make sure you check out Belgio's channel for a fantastic... Uh, startup tutorial for the uh, uh, CH47 Chinook, which has just been released for X-Plane. I believe it's possibly the shortest video. Review coming this week. I believe it's possibly the shortest video that he's ever actually produced, so make sure you check that out. Um, 15 minutes, yeah, that's about right. (laughs) So don't forget to give this YouTube a great like and subscribe, and uh, of course, maybe, seeing that you're here, maybe think about giving this video a like and this channel a bit of a subscribe too, and if you love the And check out his liveries. (laughs) 
<laughs> and yes, yeah. I also have liveries. Yes, I'm a paywork developer. Liveries, gumroad.com for session over wing 24. Okay, thanks. Uh, also, folks, if you do want to support the three Grumpy Simmers and the work that we do, please consider supporting to our Patreon, patreon.com for session over wing 24. Details will be in the description down below. All right, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for spending your grumpy hour and a bit with us. Take care. Safe skies to all. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye for now. Oh. <laughs>